Hello and welcome to a budget commander deck featuring Shanna, Sissy's Legacy for under £30. So, let's go over the main part, the commander first. Firstly, Shanna is a one for one cost and a one green to be able to cast her. Then, it makes it really easy to bring out early for us because what main objective of the deck is to bring out creatures who have ways to create tokens and with these tokens should be able to gain more and more power. Her abilities read as, she cannot be targeted by any abilities your opponent control from their own creatures. Not spells, but abilities those creatures control and use. She can't cut to her target of any of those. And, whenever there is another creature on the board, she gets a 1-1 one -one counter on her. So the major objective, like I said, is to get a lot of creatures out where you can spam out lots of tokens. Then we're just going to do a lot of damage, command of damage, show it away. We have some strong enchantments. Instance and sorceries we're going to use just to help a buffer up and then what we're going to do is going to swing in for commander damage and hopefully get it done quick Now let's go over our creatures shall we first we have our Grieving of Phalanx and Battleship Warrior Our Grieving of Phalanx allows us for each creature control reduce its cost by one and it also has vigilance very nice And for Battleship Warrior it has boast which costs one white and one extra Creatures we control have plus one one until the end of turn Next we have Checkpoint Officer and Clarion Cathars. For Checkpoint Officer, for one white and one extra, it allows us to tap target creature. And for the Clarion Cathars, we enter the battlefield, we create a 1-1 one -one human creature token. We'll have a main theme of the deck, and that is human overall as types. Next we have Codespell Cleric and Dawnheart Mentor. For the Codespell Cleric, it has Vigilance, and when it enters the battlefield, if it was a second spell we cast on this turn, we give it target creature plus one plus one. Not to end the turn, but overall. And for the Dawn Hot Mentor, when it enters the battlefield, it creates a 1 1 human creature token and it has a coven cost of six. Give a target creature free free until the end of the turn and trample only if you have three creatures with three or more different powers. Next, we have Dawn Heart Rejuvenator and Dawn Heart Wardens. Dawn Heart Rejuvenator on ETB into the battlefield. Gain free life and get a colour of any choice, which for us is green and white. And for the Dawnheart Wardens, it has Vigilance and Coven, which is on combat. If you control three different powers, creatures we control get plus one plus zero until end of turn. Next, we have Doom Traveller and Falconer Adept. For the Doom Traveller, when it dies, you create a 1 1 spirit token. Like I said, more power for Shana. And for the Falconer Adept, when it attacks, create a 1 1 flying bird token that's tapped and attacking. Next we have Fencing Ace and Inspiring Captain. Fencing Ace is a 1-1 one -one who just simply has double strike and for Inspiring Captain when it enters the battlefield creatures we control get 1-1 one -one until the end of the turn. Next we have Humble Naturalist and Mardu Horde Chief. For the Humble Naturalist it has the ability of add one mana of any colour but only be spent on creatures and for the Horde Chief when after the combat phase if we attacked it can enter the battlefield, it creates a 1-1 one -one warrior token. Oeshra Cultivator and Propeller Pioneer. For the Cultivator, you're able to add on the field, but it's a 0-3, but you can sacrifice it by paying 3 and find one basic land and then shuffle your library. For the Pioneer, it has Flying and Fabricate 1, which allows you to either put a 1-1 one -one onto a target creature or make a 1-1 one -one servo. Either way, gives us more power to the field. Next, we have Perimeter Sergeant and Sun Home Stalwart. With the Primitive Sergeant, whenever it attacks, other humans you control get plus one, plus zero until the end of the turn. And for the Sunwork Stalwart, it has First Strike, but also Mentor. When it attacks, it is then gives a plus one, plus one counter to a creature with lesser power. Sun Sentinel and Youthful Knight. Sun Sentinel has Vigilance, and the Youthful Knight has First Strike. Timberland Guide and the Reverend Hopper Knight. For the Timberland Guide, on Enter the Battlefield, it puts a one, one counter on target creature permanently. And for the Reverend Hopper Knight, when it enters the battlefield, create a number of 1 1 white human soldiers equal to the devotion to white. Now, let's go over some bit more spicier cards in the deck. Lena, Selfless Champion, and Odric, Lunark, Marshal. For Lena, when she enters the battlefield, create a number of 1 1 soldiers equal to the number of non token creatures you control. You can also sacrifice her to make all other creatures you control indestructible. For Odric, you could then, at the beginning of each combat, Creatures you control get first strike in a turn. If they, when you have first strike, they then get D 
additional chance of having flying, death touch, double strike, haste, hexproof, all on the, the screen to see, but a lot of things you get extra, lots of value for card. Next, we have Knight Errant of Eos and Soul Warden. For the Knight Errant, has Convoke, where it enters the battlefield, it looks at the top six cards of your library. If you have the two creature cards with a mana value X or less, equal to the amount of creatures that can convoke this card, Put the revealed cards into your hand, if it ever kills that's not revealed or is not a creature, goes into your graveyard. And for Soul Warden, whenever anything enters the battle as a creature, you gain one life. That includes from your opponent's side, you gain one life. And for our final creature is Siege Veteran. At the beginning of each combat on your turn, put a 1 1 counter permanently, not on turn to turn, on the target creature you control. And whenever a non creature token dies, Okay, a 1 1 colorless soldier artifact token. Now let's take a look at our sorcerers Captain's Call cool and Adventurous Impulse. Captain's Call cool allows us to make three 1 1 white soldier tokens, and for Adventurous Impulse, it allows us to look at the top three cards of your library, may have either a creature or land card from among them, put it into your hand, put the rest onto the bottom of your library in any order. Engineered Might and King Harold's Revenge. For Engineered Might, we are able to choose one of two options. Target creature gets 5-5 five, five and gains trample until the end of turn, or creatures you control gain 2 plus 2 until the end of turn and they gain vigilance. For the King Herald of Venge, until the end of turn, target creature gets plus 1 plus 1 for each creature you control and gains trample. It must be blocked this turn if able. Mass production and path to the festival. For the mass production, we are able to create 4 1 1 colorless soldier artifact tokens. And for Path to the Festival, you search your library for one basic land card, put that onto the field, tap, then shuffle. Then if there are three or more basic land types upon land control, you scry one. Not bad at all, and it also has a flashback for a cost of five. Next is Scout the Wilderness and Soul's Might. For the Scout the Wilderness, it has the kicker ability. Then you also search your library for a basic land, put it into the battlefield, tapped. Then if this spell was kicked, create two 1-1 one -one white soldier tokens. And for the soul's might, put X 1 1 counters on target creature where is the X is the equal amount of the creature's power. So if our commander is already at, say, 10 power, we double her power up to 20. It's going to be absolutely incredible. And finally, for one of my favorite sorceries, Cultivate. Search your library for the two basic lands, reveal them from what you find, put one onto the battlefield and one to your hand, then shuffle. I love this card, love ramp. It's an incredible card. Moving now, now to our instance, we have Broken Wings and Adamant Will. Broken Wings destroys target artifact enchantment or creature with flying. Have Adamant Will gives a target creature plus two plus two and indestructible. Fertilis Favor and Bull Strength. Fertilis Favor allows you to search the library for a basic land card and put it into the battle tapped and shuffle. Then put two plus one plus one counters up to one target artifact or creature, which is Fantastic Ramp and Bull Strength gives you plus two, plus two, and gain trample and untap the creature that it goes on. Fortify and Fierce Retribution. Fortify allows you to have choose between two options. Choose either get plus two, plus zero at the end of turn, or plus zero, plus two until end of turn. Fierce Retribution, which has cleave, destroy a target attacking creature, or you pay the cleave cost, remove the attacking part, just destroy a creature. Mighty Leap and Make a Sand. Mighty Leap allows us to give target creature plus two plus two and gains flying until the end of turn. Make a sand is an instant where creatures give plus one plus zero and they gain indestructible until end of turn. Radiance Judgment and Pressure Point. Radiance Judgment allows you to destroy target creature with power of four or greater. Additionally, this card can be cycled to draw a card if you wish. And for pressure point, you can tap target creature and you can draw a card. Skywinder Shot and Raise the Alarm. Skywinder Shot allows you to destroy a target creature with a power 3 or greater and to scry 1. Raise the Alarm allows you to create 2 1 1 white soldier tokens. Silver Might and Swift Response. Silver Might allows us to give a target creature plus 2 plus 2 and travel until end of turn and it has a flashback cost. And Swift Response allows you to destroy a target tapped. Creature. Wild Size and Destroy Evil. Wild Size allows us to give target creature plus two plus two and trample to end the turn and draw a card. Destroy Evil, I would choose one of Destroy Target Creature with four toughness or greater, or Destroy Target Enchantment. Now we're moving on to our artifacts. 
Arcane Signet and Silvok Battle Chair. Arcane Signet is a simple one as usual. Tap to just gain one mana of your commander's colour. And for the Battle Chair, it has four mirrored in. And it also, when this happens, you create a 2 2 red rebel. You attach the Battle Chair to them. And whoever's attached to this artifact gains plus four, plus four, and has trample. And for our last artifact, not many in this deck, is a soul ring. Now we are moving on to our enchantments. Angelic Gift and Equestrian Skill. These enchantments are both auras. The first being when Angelic Gift ends the battle, you draw a card, and whatever it's enchanted with gains flying. For the second one, Angelic Creature gets plus three, plus three, and as long as Angelic Creature is a human, it also has trample. Find a path and Griffin Guide. Find a path is an enchant land. When you enchant it to a land, it gets plus two green. You also, when it enters the battlefield, you venture into the dungeon. And Griffin Guide is the other enchantment, which is plus two, plus two as an aura. And they also gain flying whenever it does die this creature, you gain two, two Griffin creature token. Historia's Wisdom and Intangible Virtue. For the Historia's Wisdom, it is a enchant aura again. Whenever it is enchanted to a creature that is among the greatest power that you control, then you are able to draw a card. And if it is a enchanted to a creature, then you gain plus two, plus one on the creature. Tangible Virtue is a simple one, it's just an enchantment overall. So your creature tokens now have plus one, plus one, and gain vigilance. Pacifism and Sanctuary Lockdown. For the first, it is a enchant creature, not your own, but you put it on your opponents. Enchanted creature can't attack or block. You usually do this if they have some big creature on the board, just throw it on it, and it becomes just stuck and able to do anything. And for the lockdown, humans gain plus one, plus one. And now for our final enchantments, Shelter and Bowels and Glorious Anthem. Shelter and Bowels is the enchant aura. Shelter creature, you get plus one, plus three, and when it enters the battlefield, you draw a card. For the Glorious Anthem, straight out enchantment, you get plus one, plus one to everything. And finally, to finish off, the end on the lands. It's quite simple. There's going to be 17 plains and 17 forests. That is the entire deck. And that has been the entire deck. If anyone has any questions, put down below as usual. I do have the deck list also of the mox field in the description. If you ever need anything, any of the tokens you need, it's all there for you. Thank you all for always watching the video. I've been doing really well with these videos. A lot of attention has got to them. People have been enjoying them and liking them. And that is great to see. People have been playing these decks I've been hearing. I had a few messages saying thanks to them. I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep going. I don't know how low a budget I can go, but I'll try. But yeah, as you probably heard in this video, it's a bit of a different mic. I got a new mic finally. It's a bit of a, a bit of a strong one to move on. I need to get an actual proper setup for it. But it's doing okay, I think. It sounds okay. I just need to get a bit of the sound all out in the room. But apart from that, it's actually doing okay. But yes, thank you for all for watching as usual. The usual, you the words that everyone says. You know, sort of like, you enjoyed them. I'm not going to stop. I'm going to do some other things soon, maybe some streams on Twitch or something like that, just some runs on Magic Gathering and Alliance, I think, and we're going to keep going with these, I'm going to see how low I can go, but yeah, thank you for watching, and until next time, I'll see you in the next one.